Hey everybody, I'm Izzy. Thank you for checking out this video. Today we're going to show you how to install the cabinet installation plate on the Grabos, whether it's the Classic or the Pro, it works with both. And then we're going to show you some things about how to use it and some things you should take caution when using them. All right, so if you're right-handed, you're going to want to put the Grabo so the, the on and off button are facing away from you. And then you're going to put this on the left side. Now down here at the bottom, you're going to see two large holes. and In those holes will be some socket screws. On the back, there's these little slots in the risers. Those slide right over these two clips right here. Now these are tight. We made them tight for a reason. We don't want this to be loose on the Grabo. So push it down till it seats and then take an Allen head and dr drive your, your uh, socket screw in. You don't need to over tighten them, just need to get it in there so they're snug. And your installation plate is installed. It's that simple. Sorry about the lighting in here. We're in one of the darkest rooms in my house, but I want to show you a couple ways to use the Grabo. It's really quite simple. So there's two ways to use the Grabo to install plates. Now, if you're working with a team and you want to move fast, the first way I would recommend is this. We're going to take a straight edge, we're going to take a straight two by three or two by four, line it up with our laser line or level, and then and then you basically just clamp your two by four or one two by three or whatever straight edge straight edge material you want to use to the wall. And you can set the cabinets up here. One person can hold them while another person screws them off, allowing you to go very quickly. If you're going to be working by yourself or you actually need time to set the cabinets up and maybe scribe them or do other things, this is how you'd use them. So on the installation plate, you'll notice there's, there's a notch right here at the front and a notch here in the back, and that's to hold an L-frame. So what we've done is just taken a couple pieces of plywood, screwed them out together on an L-frame, so when one piece sits on it, it rests on top of the gravel, if you can see that right there. So if you're working by yourself, using an 8-foot section or 7-foot section like this will not be as easy. Smaller sections work better, but if you have somebody with you, you can use the longer sections pretty easily. So Maggie and I are going to go ahead and set this up to our laser line, and then we'll install the front piece. So with the, front, with the back piece installed and level with our laser line, we'll just bring our front piece over and drop it right in. And now we can set cabinets up there. Now, no walls are perfectly straight, so if you need to move the cabinet back or forth, you can take a small shim and put it right underneath the piece of the material to move it whichever direction you want. And that's handy to know when you need to scribe something to the wall. So one of the things I wanted to show you when, you're, you know, when your grabos are new and the foam pads are new, they can leave little marks on the wall. What we found is just a little hand sanitizer wipe takes them right off. And then as you use them more, that tends to go away. Uh, so it's pretty easy to use and there's lots of other uses for it. We'll make a better video when we have time to actually get the proper lighting and everything set up, walk you through some more details guys. And then we'll also make some videos of other uses. So make sure you come back and visit as we have time, we'll get those videos up. So to be completely safe when you're using the Grabo, you want to use it between the studs. Now there's a reason for that. If the drywall wasn't installed properly, they pushed the screws in too far and there's air gaps behind it. If you put that over something that hasn't been installed properly, there is a chance that it will bubble the drywall. These have a lot of power. We've put up to 250 pounds on two of these without failing. We haven't actually got it to failure yet, but we have had two instances where we put it over the top of a stud on poorly installed drywall and it actually popped the drywall a little. So you wanna be careful about that when you're using it. Best practice is to use these between studs if you don't know how the drywall was installed. If it was installed properly, using silicone or uh, caulking and then the screws were done properly where they weren't punching through the material, you're fine. But if they weren't installed properly or if you don't know that they were, best to use it just between the studs. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that we have not tried these on the wallpaper. A lot of commercial settings, there's some really thick wallpaper on the walls that you install cabinets over. We have not had an opportunity to try that on that, so we don't know what it will do to that. So be cautious when you, if you're gonna use them for that. These things do have a lot of power. Um, so they've got a re really good bond and hold with the material. That said, if something's not installed properly, it can cause issues. So be aware of that. Best to work between the studs and then be cautious if you're gonna try it on wallpaper. We haven't tried it yet. I don't know what it'll do. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll have more video on the cabinet installation plates coming up showing a lot more different uses for this on pretty much any job site. There's a lot of applications for this. We wanted to get this out first for those of you who are using it for cabinet installation. We'll have a lot more information coming. Be sure to check back and thank you guys very much for your business and your interest. We really appreciate it here. It means a lot to us. We'll see you guys soon.